And it's Ken Kreitzer for CBSI Talking Business. We're in New York City today at the office of our good friend Ruth Stevens, just back from a teaching opportunity in India. Ruth is a past president of the Direct Marketing Club of New York, an adjunct professor at the NYU Stern School, and uh, president of e-commerce marketing strategy. And uh, Ruth, great to see you. Um, great you had a, a good trip to India. Tell us a little bit about that, if you would. Thanks, Ken. I had the best time in Bangalore, where I stayed for about two and a half months on the campus of Indian Institute of Management, which is one of the leading business schools in India. I was teaching marketing to uh, graduate students. They call it postgraduate program. It's like the equivalent of an MBA. And I taught a marketing elective called customer acquisition and retention, which is you know the field that we've all sure. been active in for for many years, and um, it it was really uh, an an amazing experience. These kids are extremely smart. The getting into the school is very difficult, and so it's the cream of Indian um, India's youngsters, uh, as as I might say. It's the the cream of India's youngsters, and they are. Um, very motivated, they do their homework. <laughs> and, but the other interesting thing is that they don't have business experience. The way the MBA um, system is structured there is that they go directly to graduate school out of undergrad. So the concepts about data-driven marketing and using um, the uh, calculating the lifetime value of a customer and otherwise managing the customer base like a financial asset are theoretically of great interest to them but not really something that they grasp in uh, tactical terms so that was an interesting exposure for me what i really enjoyed most though is that um, the, the campus was like a botanic garden at just the most gorgeous plantings and beautiful infrastructure. The faculty was brainy and also very sociable and lots of fun activities and also intellectually stimulating activities on campus. Lots of guest speakers from Indian industry and I, I just had a ball. Oh, that's great. Now, we think of India as uh, a place where the contact center industry uh, has been very active and also uh, software development, many apps. A, a lot of U.S. companies have app development centers in India. What are, what are some of the growth areas in, in commerce and industry in India? That's so interesting. Business process outsourcing, as you mentioned, Ken, is a huge uh, source of revenue and growth in India. In fact, in Bangalore, which is known as the high-tech capital of India, it was their growth was driven by business process outsourcing. So that's data centers, call centers, and um, also entrepreneurship and, and development of, of um, technology. So that's a, a, an area of, of extraordinary growth. The uh, other sectors in India are also have enormous potential because the country really, I mean, while they have excellent technology and a, and a very strong educational system at the high end, they still have infrastructure problems. The traffic in Bangalore is notorious, notoriously bad, and uh, that means opportunity for investing in, in infrastructure development. I learned a bit about the airline industry there, just happening to um, hear a talk by the Minister of Civil Avi Aviation who came to our campus and learned that it is in foment today. Uh, many of the airlines are not making money, but there are a few standouts that are, and it has revolutionized domestic travel, uh, while the train system that was built by the uh, British during several hundred years of colonial rule um, is uh, still being maintained and there are some excellent trains. The air travel has really taken off and this is how people get around. 
Um, one other thing I'd like to mention about India that really impressed me is that people there have a passion and, and devotion to family and family life. So part this, I, I bring this up because that is what drives a lot of internal domestic air travel, that during festivals you go home and visit and stay with your family. And this is a, a, a country where the family is the most important social unit. And it was really touching for me as a you know, 21st century American to see those family values being um, carried out every day, part of their lives. That's neat. Now, how is the e-commerce uh, industry? Uh, we were just talking with Brian Craver this morning about uh, the growth in e-commerce over the Thanksgiving. Uh, period in the United States yeah. and uh, mobile first uh, being the orientation of many consumers uh, today. Do you find that as well in India? It's booming. The, uh, the, the small mom and pop shops are uh, still the, the heart of retail commerce in, in towns and villages, but in the uh, cities more and more uh, e online ordering is taking place. There are amazing equivalents to Amazon, uh, meaning general merchandise. There are also very mature apps for ordering food delivery and uh, even grocery shopping. In fact, all of the faculty members on, on my campus have their groceries delivered by a guy on a motorcycle with a huge backpack filled with groceries who just comes up and brings your, you know, br brings everything you need to your door. Very good. Now you, you're an expert in business to business marketing in your practice and the many articles that you write uh, for noted publications. What are some of the business to business marketing practices that, that you witness there in India? Interestingly, I, because I was teaching a course that was both consumer and B2B, I was able to look into really both sides of, uh, to some extent, but I was disappointed actually to learn that B2B marketing is still in its infancy in India. The way businesses buy today is still the way we used to buy 20, 30 years ago, meaning it's about personal selling with some uh, advertising support. And even though that advertising support might be digital today, it's still not the sophisticated, uh, data-driven lead generation, management, nurturing, personalization, content-driven marketing that we experience here in the U.S. So that, that was a big surprise. And on the data front, me being you know all about, if I can just hype my book here a little bit, Ken, um, all about the use of data in B2B marketing. Ironically, I learned that while uh, data uh, discovery and development of B2B marketing databases or data sources in India is very sophisticated, it's all on behalf of the North American market. So that means that our, um, uh, while we are benefiting from that extra support, in India, they are not actually using that for internal selling, domestic uh, selling. Can I ask you, uh, you know, one of our last chats, you told me a little bit about your experience teaching in Asia, uh, that you, you've gone to conferences and taught in Asia, Hong Kong. What is a contrast of, of, of China, Hong Kong, uh, that part of Asia, to what you saw this year in, in India? Yeah, so um, it... it you know, it's really about development levels, frankly. Uh, I've been teaching in Hong Kong and Singapore in the past, and these are first world countries now in terms of infrastructure and business practice. So that's really the, the, the big difference, I would say. Well, well it's, uh, glad you're back in New York, and uh, you've got a vigorous uh, consulting practice on uh, business to business marketing and also uh, teaching at, at NYU Stern. What are some of the key topics uh, that you're going to be focusing on and working with your clients on uh, going into next year. Thanks. Well, my uh, big focus area right now is putting together a new course for NYU Stern, or new to me anyway. It's a, a course that's been on the curriculum for a while in new product development um, for, from a marketing perspective. So I'm really looking forward to 
learning about that and developing a syllabus and a, a set of materials that the students will enjoy. Very good. And you had an article not long ago um, at, uh, I was reading up on, on 11 tips for your career. And one of the ones that was at the top of your list was uh, making friends in an industry. We're mm. good friends. I appreciate it. I value that. And uh, uh, through some of the direct marketing organizations, uh, the Direct Marketing Club of New York, which you were the president of, Hudson Valley, and uh, some of the national organizations, you meet tremendous people. You make lifelong friends out of it. Uh, and it's so valuable. What, what were some of the uh, key points you, uh, from your article? Well, you just n niftily summarized <laughs> m many of them. I, well, one of the points I made is that you want to build a network. And I mean an authentic network, not a face-to-face -face network, not just an online one. That includes, uh, and, and a great way to do that is by joining professional associations and becoming active in them. So that means volunteering for committees or helping out and, and establishing yourself as uh, someone who can really contribute and, and, and is interesting and pr interested in promoting the, you know, the, the objectives of, of your industry sector. And I, in fact, in India, I had a, a chance a couple of times to explain to students and to professional groups the importance of building a personal network, not only for career development, for, but also for personal satisfaction. Absolutely. And uh, you've got an article coming out today in our friend Thorne McGee's publication, Target Marketing Magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us, what, can you preview that uh, your topic there? Yes, I, I was able to, to reconnect with a, a fellow uh, faculty member from Singapore Management University, who's an Indian, um, but a PhD from Penn State, um, who uh, is a specialist in B2B marketing. And he uh, gave me an interview that explained the state of B2B marketing in India today. And it was a very insightful ex explanation of why B2B marketing has lagged in India compared to, the, to North America and Europe. So I hope people will have a look at that article in biznology.com, which is um, where it was originally posted and in Target Marketing where it's appearing today. Well, Ruth Stevens, so good to be able to chat and hear about your teaching experience in India, how unique and special and uh, that is, and uh, some of your topics that you're writing about. And uh, uh, you're the president of eMarketing mm -hmm. Commerce and author of Data Driven Marketing, a new publication, and uh, past president of the Direct Marketing Club of New York. And great to visit with you. Best Thank wishes you, to you and your family for the holidays. Same to you. Thanks, Lutz. Great to visit. Hey, this is Ken Kratzer for CBSI Talking Business today in New York City.